Hello everyone, uh, now we'll be talking about design of flat slabs, uh, the first part of design of flat slabs. So why do people use flat slabs? Flat slabs are solid slabs that directly transfer the loads to the columns without the need for beams. So actually this is why uh, uh, architects prefer it, because there are no beams. And also uh, 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 builders, I mean, uh, uh, Contractors prefer it um, uh, because they are faster to construct uh, for sure carpenters and uh, 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 what they call uh, uh, steel uh, uh, steel uh, fabricators, not fabricators, sorry, uh, steel laborers, uh, the blacksmiths. They prefer it because they are, it's easier for them to, to uh, uh, form the steel and it's easier for them to uh, uh, form the former and uh, all of that is versus a major cross structural concern which is the possibility of uh, column punching through the slab um, but however this problem has several solutions <coughs> um, the dimensions of last slabs vary the slab thickness uh, TS is the bigger of 150 mm and the long span divided by 32 if no drop panels exist or the long span over 36 if drop panel exists and we will be discussing the issue of drop panels in the uh, second video. The edge beam thickness if you have edge beams should be more than three times the slab thickness. But the issue of having uh, uh, the edge beam or not the edge beam, for sure, it increases the lateral stiffness of the system and it increases the uh, uh, overall stiffness of the uh, uh, slab. But the, at the locations where the columns are in direct contact with the flat slab, I mean, especially if you don't have beams at these locations, the slab is highly susceptible for punching shear. So the punching shear occurs around the perimeter at a distance of D over 2 from the face of the column. Hence, it is significantly varies with the shape and location of the column. Um, so these are the planes of punching failure, punching shear failure. So if it is an interior column, uh, it will be along a D over 2 from the whole perimeter. However, if it's an edge column, you, you are talking about three sides. If it is a corner column, you are talking about only two sides. Uh, if it is an irregular column, it will have this shape. This will be the plane of failure. Uh, again, the issue of whether you are having a drop panel or not, whether you are having a column head or not, this will uh, affect the punching uh, uh, stress because it will affect the area. But we'll be discussing this in more detail when we discuss the drop panels. So, so, so don't, don't think about this at this point. Think about it later in the second video, covering the flat slabs. So the punching shear, the code provisions tell us how to do it. So you, you are calculating mainly two things, the shear stress and the shear strength. The punching shear stress and the punching shear strength. The punching shear stress is simply the force multiplied by a factor called beta depending on the column location divided by the area of the plane of punching shear failure which is the perimeter times d and this perimeter will change depending on the location of the column. So if you are talking about an interior column it's uh, the dimension A1 uh, plus, B, plus B1 multiplied by 2. So A1 and B1 is, is the distance or the, the column dimension plus D. But for an, an exterior column, it's a little bit different. It's A1 plus 2B1 because the plane has changed. For a corner column, it's A1 plus B1. This is why you could see that it would be more critical even if you're talking about corner columns and exterior columns. And this is one of the merits of having an edge beam, which, which is that if you have an edge beam, you are actually protecting your exterior and corner columns from uh, punching failure. No punching would happen over there. 
versus the punching shear strength is the smallest of these three equations. Uh, uh, you could see that these, the, the first one and the third one are very correlated. I mean 0.316 root FC over gamma C and this is 0.316 times 0.5 plus A over B. Okay, so actually if, if the ratio of A and B is half, so uh, this equation will be actually equal to that equation. Um, versus 0.8 times alpha d over b naught plus 0.2 times root fc over gamma c. The, all of them, they have root fc over gamma c. But the factor that's multiplied by it is the one that will differ. So in the second relationship, it's actually a parameter. It's variable depending on the location of the column again, which is again a very important issue when talking about function. So you calculate these three values and pick the smallest of all of them. Once you prove that the punching shear strength is 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 uh, uh, less than the uh, sorry more than the punching shear stress, it is safe. However, if it is less than the punching shear stress, then you need to change either the dimension or the structure system. So you need either to change the thickness or to totally change the structure system. Um, the load of, on the flat slabs, the, because you don't have beams, the walls will be directly supported on the slabs. So you need to calculate the total weight of the row of the walls all over the flat slab and divide it by the area of the floor. In case of not having a drop panel, and this is our case that we are talking about now, W ultimate is simply 1.4 times the net load, which is gamma concrete times slab thickness plus the weight from the walls plus the weight from the flooring, plus 1.6 times the live load. And one of the issues with flat slabs in general is that these loads are very high because the slab itself is thick. So there is a factor, that a number that we'll be calculating, which is the total static moment, and we're using it to use what's called the simplified method. So in the long direction, the, this M node is W ultimate times L short times L long minus 2 D over 3, all squared over 8. For the short dimension, you simply swap the L long with the L short. Where D is in such a case, it's, it's, uh, uh, if it is just a column without a crown, without a, without a, without a uh, column head, D is the width of the column. However, if you have a column head, it will be the width of the column head. This total moment is dis distributed in the different locations within each direction. So, the analysis of flat slab, is uh, the simplified method that we'll be talking about, you have, you need to satisfy several issues here. First, this flat slab should be having at least three continuous spans per direction. The ratio of the long to short spans is, should be the maximum of 1.3. And each two successive plan, spans should not change by more than 10%. And the difference between the longest span and the shortest span per direction shouldn't exceed 20%. If any of these conditions changes, you could not use this simplified method at all. You should go and model it on the computer. The slab is divided simply into a column strip and a field strip. This is because the column strip is stiffer than, and it's more capable of hang, carrying higher moments. The total moment M node for each direction will be distributed such as, when if, here, when you look at the column strip and the field strip, whether you have marginal beams or not, if you are talking about the case with marginal beams, if you compare the moments, the percentage of the moment in the column strip versus the percentage of the moments in the field strip, you will notice that the column strip is carrying a higher load. It's carrying more moment because it is stiffer. So this is the point here. You have something that is stiffer, of stronger, so it is more capable of carrying the load. If there is no marginal beam, again, the same concept will apply. However, the edges, the values at the edges will change a little bit. Because now you don't have a marginal beam, so the stiffness has changed it a little bit at the supports. Again, the simplified method has some special considerations. First, that you need, you have a, 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 an ideal 
dimension for the field strip, which is the width of the field strip. So actually, this is half of that dimension. However, if you didn't change, if this changed, if this dimension changed, you need to adjust it. You need to get the actual width divided by the ideal width and multiply the moment in order to get the correct moment. Versus if I'm talking about a field strip with an ideal dimension versus a column strip with an ideal dimension, I will add them together and then subtract the corrected one to get the uh, uh, column strip, the corrected column strip. Again, the same provision we talked about in solid slabs, if you have high live loads, you should take this into account and have an additional reinforcement at the negative moment with this value shown where G is the dead load and P is the live load and uh, L2 and L1 are the dimensions we talked about about the long span and short span dimensions. The flat slab reinforcement, it has one of two ways to be done. Either directly reinforce it I mean, have a certain reinforcement at each location depending on the value of the bending moment at this location, whether positive or negative. So at, uh, you'll have different sections calculated and apply the, 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 the reinforcement at these different sections. Or the other way, which is actually the way I prefer, is to have a mesh. So, so you could have a mesh. You could have a mesh. An upper mesh and a lower, uh, a lower mesh. This upper mesh and lower mesh, they cover the <coughs> reinforcements of the field strips, you could say. Okay? They cover the reinforcements of the field strips because these are the basic reinforcements, the ones that are uh, 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 common all over the flat slab. Then you will have additional reinforcements at the column strips. You'll have additional reinforcements at the column strips. So if we are talking about, let's have this example, nice example, and talk about it. You have this uh, flat slab system that you could see. The columns are 500 by 400 millimeters. The floor is 3.5 meters high. The flooring weighs 2 kilonewton per meter square. The equivalent wall load is 1.5 kilonewton per meter square. The live load is 4 kilonewton per meter square. FC is 25 megapascal and F yield is 400 megapascal. So you start by dimensioning. The ratio between these two dimensions, the 6 and the 5, is 1.2, so it's 1.3. And the, all of the spans are equidistant, so the simple method is okay. The slab thickness, if you go and calculate it, you'll, be, you'll find it 6,000 divided by 32, 187.5. So take it as 200 millimeters. The column width is the, should be the largest of 300 millimeter versus the uh, 3300 over 15 and 6000 over 20. So 300 over 15, this is the clear uh, height of the, of, the, of, the, of the column. And 6000 over 20, this is the bay. So therefore the 500 is, millimeter is okay. The edge beam, the minimum dimension for the edge beam is three times the, the, the thickness. This is 600 millimeters. So the if we take the, the if we compare it to what we have, the beam of uh, a depth of 70 centimeters or 700 millimeters, that that is okay. The column strip is simply the short dimension over two, which is equal to 2.5. The field strip is uh, uh, five minus 2.5. This is 2.5. This is in the short direction. However, in the long dimension, it will be six minus 2.5. Okay, so this will be 3.5 meters. Then we go to the load calculation. Um, we'll calculate 1.4 times the dead load, which is 25 times 0.2 plus 2 plus 1.5 plus 1.6 times 4. This is 18.3 kilonewton per meter square. This is a very big load if you if you if you look at it. Then we first check for punching. You always start by check, checking for punching because if the punching fails, you need to, ch to change the, the thickness. 
but if the function goes okay, you don't need to change anything. So B1 is actually equal to A1 because it's a squared column. It's equal to A plus D, so 500 plus 175, it's 675 millimeter. Why did I take D as 175? Because you, have, should, you should subtract the cover. You should subtract the cover. So now we have 200 minus 25. This is 175, which is the cover. Okay. The perimeter is 4 times 675. This is 2700 millimeter. Beta is 1.15 for interior columns. Q up will be equal to uh, uh, W ultimate. L1 times L2 minus B1 times A1. So this will give us 541 kN. If you multiply this number for a thousand to be in newtons, then multiply it by beta, then divide it by the perimeter multiplied by d, this will give us 1.3 megapascal. Versus, we need now to, con to calculate the punching strength. The punching strength is simply 0.316 times 1.5 plus a over b times root fcu over gamma c. QCU up is simply 0.8. Uh, 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 versus uh, the third value is 0.8 times alpha d over b naught plus 0.2 all that is multiplied by root fcu over gamma c versus 0.316 root fcu over gamma c if you go and do the calculation for the three number you'll find that the smallest of them is 1.3 megapascal which is just enough equal to q up so this dimension is just sufficient it is just enough for us if you would have taken a thinner slab or if the loads would have been much a little bit more it would have failed but let's continue so let's look at the long direction strips the column strip is 2.5 meter wide the field strip is 2.5 meter wide um so m node is 18.3 times 5 times 6 minus 2 times 0.5 over 3 all cubed, all squared, over 8. This is 367.3 kilonewton meter. However, this figure is for the whole dimension. It is not per meter run. Okay. D is 200 minus 25, as mentioned before. It's 175 millimeter. The AS minimum is 0.6 BD over F yield. This will be 292 approximately. So if I calculate the four values we are talking about, the negative moments in the column strip and field strip and the positive moments in column strip and field strip you will find however you need to do something this is your moment and you need to divide by the strip width in order to get it per meter run so so in such a case uh, 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 R1 omega uh, calculation will lead us to the different area steels, and you will notice that the highest is the column strip, the negative moment of the column strip, which is 45%. Then, uh, after that, was the positive moment in the column strip. Then, the field strips, positive and negative, are the same. So, this 6 phi 10 will be our mesh, and we'll have additional 5 phi 16 in. Uh, 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 the negative side and an additional 4 phi 10 in the positive side similar very similar calculation however in the in the short direction however the difference here is that the field strip width is 3.5 meter versus the column strip width is 2.5 meters d is 200 minus 35 not 200 minus 25 so this is 165 millimeters the m node short is very similar this very similar concept AS minimum, very similar concept, but now the D has changed, so the minimum value has changed. Again, you do the same calculation, but beware that the field strip has changed. So when we divide this figure by uh, the field strip width, you're not divided by 2.5, you're not dividing it by 3.5 meters. But again, you see the same 6, 5, 10, 6, 5, 10 here, the same 6, 5, 10 there. Here, this value is a little bit less. This value is a little bit less. But again, you will have an upper and lower mesh of 6, 5, 10 applied all over. Then you have the steel at the locations that you need them.
by the way, it's not you shouldn't always commit yourself to a certain way. I mean, you could do things a little bit different. I mean, maybe he, here you could have additional steel uh, with different sizes, 514, 516, whatever. I mean, this is just an example. But the concept here is that you are having an upper and lower uh, uh, mesh. Then you are uh, continuing your job. Thank you.